So OpenAI announced this feature, which is extremely interesting for ChatGPT macOS app, which basically means that ChatGPT can now start looking into your applications and work with it directly, right? So what this means is that in this early beta, you can let ChatGPT look at your coding apps to provide better answers, right? So there are certain apps which are supported, Xcode, Item, VS Code, for example. And once you give access for ChatGPT to this, you can just simply start making use of ChatGPT GPT with these apps without any any sort of you know external or a third party thing so let's try it out I have got chat GPT over here with me and what it says the documentation what it says is that once to work with a compatible app first make sure that it's running then in the chat GPT chat bar click the work with apps button and select a compatible application okay it's been a while since I started or since I tried chat GPT as an application so let me just See if I can make sense of it. So here is my terminal, which is item, right? And here is my chat GPT application. And um, let's see what the shortcut was for chat GPT. So for chat bar, let's say if I am doing command tab space. No, I can't do that. <laughs> okay, let's see what else. Command J, right? So if I have command J over here, you can see that I get this chat GPT tab but I'm not able to see anything. So maybe I need to update the app first. Let's see, check for updates, install and relaunch. Yeah, so I have not updated it yet. And now you can see, ChatGPT can now read from coding apps so it can offer ideas and suggestions, right? So let's try to take a look at this, what's what it's doing. So it automatically detects that I'm running item and VS code, right? And there are two more apps which it supports, I'm assuming, terminal and text edit, which I don't know like if it supports or if it's not supporting, but anyway, let's enable it in item. All right, so now I have enabled chat GPT with my item too, and it says that it's able to see like where I am, right? So what do you see, right? So first things first. So it looked at item, it said that I looked that, you know, you are on the YouTube directory, cleared the terminal, and now you had a fresh command. So what I would like it to do is, you know, create a, let's see, a temporary file, which is 10 MB in size. Let's see what it tries to do. So it gave me a command, right? It's not obviously running it directly. It just gave me a command, asked me to copy it, run it, so I can do it, hit enter, and you can see, like it just created a temp file, right? Let's say if I try to do this now and I make a typo, right, over here. So I can say it did not work, why? Right, so it's able to see. The issue in your command is that you have made a typo and you know, this is uh, not what it's supposed to be. So what you see over here is a smart assistant that has like, instead of like looking at my whole screen right now, it's getting into a specific software, right? And it's able to tell you what needs to be done. So this is cool, right? So one big advantage over here is that now you don't have to keep on switching things, right? So if I, for example, in this specific case, if I remove everything over here, and let's say if I also add VS Code as integration, right? Okay, so for VS Code, at least, they are giving their own extension, which is weird. I mean, why is this extension not hosted in the VS Code store itself. So this is the extension which it installed, right? And let's try this out. Let's see if I have an index.html page and I have this login page, for example, right? And if I go back to my app and if I switch now to, let's say VS Code, right? So it's also paired now. And if I start saying, hey, create a basic login page in HTML. Let's see what it tries to do. So what's this application exactly doing is that it's not writing for you, right? So it's not that cursor extension or cursor IDE like for Madware, you know, it just automatically also starts changing your code. It will give you code over here in the second window only, but it's smart because it's able to read the content and it's not doing that by screenshots alone because you can see over here, write this right here. I have selected this text, right? But I can scroll up and I can still ask it, can you make this a bit pretty right so you see it's saying focused on selected lines over here 
which I have. And um, you can see, um, let's see, here's a prettier and slightly more modernized version of your login page. So it did make the whole page pretty, but it also knows what I have selected, right? It's It knows that I am focused on line number 80, right? So it's not like a continuous screenshot sequence going on over here. It's smart in terms of like what I have done with accessibility and extension in this specific case, but it's still like a chat based interface only. So, I mean, there's that. So now the obvious next question would be if I'm learning with chat GPT or something like this is I'll ask, how do I preview this in my browser? Right. And it's, I mean, the future of learning, if you see, this is a great thing, great tool, but now you can see that it's advising you to install live server. This is one way. If you are learning, for example, Python, you might want to just start a Python static server. This, that would be second way. If you are learning Node.js, you might want to start a Node.js static server. If you're learning Express, you might want to just create an Express.js route altogether. So there are a lot of ways to achieve what you want to do. The future of education is more about you take a single course or a single thing or whatever, like something you are following and then use these agents use these interfaces to just enhance your learning a lot this is so good so good in terms of like if you're learning something new if i'm learning let's say rust or if i'm learning a go language or a you know new programming language any sort of thing i'll probably just keep this on the side i will probably follow a video or documentation experiment and then maybe like you know just keep on asking chat gpt what i'm doing wrong if there is a better way to do this or you know why this is done specifically the way this is done. So a very noob question, for example, is that why do we have semicolons in style sheets and so on? So you can have like as many questions as you want. It's also telling you like how to, it's giving you like both the methods, method two and method three. It's telling me exact commands also because it knows like I'm in the YouTube folder. So it knows like where I am. Can you give command for Python static server, right? I mean, I've just literally given away what I want, um, not as somebody which who's new would not do this. But yeah, this gives us an option because this command I think should produce an error because in my system, at least Python is not there. Python three is there, right? So if I ask it now, it did not work, right? Because it's able to see my item also and it's able to see my code also. You can see that I don't have to like spend a lot of time now figuring out, hey, this is, did not work because of X, Y, Z issue. It can see that the issue command in your terminal output suggests two problems, Python command not found. Modern systems often use Python 3 instead of Python. So run this command instead, right? So if I run this and if I enter this over here, you can see that this works. Now, if I ask it, what is that, what is that, this thing over here? So you see what it's effectively doing is doing a lot of context transfer for you, right? Chat GPT can still answer the same questions which it is doing, but it's doing a lot of context transfer with these apps directly within the desktop application. So you don't have to like manually copy paste this or give it full context of what has happened and so on and so forth. When you see, for example, this line, because it's able to see it on my computer, it suggests that it's listening on IPv4 and v6. So if I ask it, can I restrict it to just be on IPv4, for example. So now it has given me another command which can restrict it to IPv4, which by the way, I did not know in Python's static server, right? So I did not know about this bind flag. Now you can see when I open this, you can see I have like a very nice page which has some broken CSS, but that's fine. But now if I go back, I mean, Chrome is not supported over here, but what you can do, I think, is you can till, still take these screenshots, right? So if I take this login page screenshot, sure, allow, allow. And um, if I ask it key, for example, input fields are overflowing. Right now it's working with item and code again. So it has some context of index.html files and index.tsx. It's giving me this login container command. I don't know if it will fix it or not. Let's just try it out blindly over here. Save, you know, and let's see if it worked. And it clearly did not, right? So I can just ask it and say it did not fix it. So again, taking the code as it is, I'm not you know, running any sort of logical thing at my end. And now it is fixed, right? So it's, it's crazy good, right? So <laughs> as a developer, I mean, if you're somebody who's not a developer, this would almost feel like magic, right? I exactly know why box sizing, box sizing border box works, but you might just not know it. And you just, you know, copy it and paste it. And the future is going to be crazy. The future is going to be crazy because not only now people who are skilled have access to something like this to just 
do boring things or you know maybe adventure into new things but people who are not skilled who are just starting off also have the, these access to these things because this page can somebody can just build now without even you know learning anything at all it's not even about html or css you can build something like this without learning anything at all all you have to be good at is following instructions on what your software is telling you to do and in a lot of cases if it just directly starts running commands for you you just don't even have to do that so if i ask it to you know if i say it like can i change heading from i don't know like welcome back to welcome um mail i don't know and it will be able to do that it's a very simple task so it has all the context it has all the things and the background and everything sort of uh, you know it would be able to do and not only this I, I have built the most boring thing you can ever build with a ai software you can also build like games so for example if i ask it can you now build a fresh ping pong game in html in a single html file and i don't even know like what ping pong game would it would create like i don't even know what sort of game <laughs> this is gonna be i've not told it more than that so it has to you know use its own intelligence so let's see what it does and then as it's building it what you can do is it has already access to your item and code in a native fashion but it also can use screenshots directly from the applications right so now it has built me something i'm excited to try it out let's see what happens i save this i refresh this and yep this works and it's actually functional i'm and it also has like a computer which is able to you know <laughs> adjust and i already lost from computer so now what i can tell it is that uh, can you make it use keyboard instead of mouse and also show confetti every time i win right so you can play around you can mess around with these tools a lot and it's it's really fun and it's really like you know if you are learning about game programming or computer science in general it's it's such a fun tool i mean if this was something which was there when i was starting programming i would be like extremely interested in asking chat gpt to build all sorts of various front end applications right but the interesting and the important bit here is that once you copy this code and once you paste it and once it starts learning please go back and study what it created because that is where the magic is that is where you have the power right now one of the drawbacks with these systems right now is that they have to like you know they end up writing the whole file again more or less so they they're not able to go precisely at a specific point in the file just edit that part and you know call it a day they have to write the full message so maybe that's something that gets improved or better in the next few months save this refresh let's see now the game is not working at all right so yeah i mean you're going to spend a lot of time debugging with these systems once they their prompt size increases a lot because now they start to lose out on memory what's happening now i can just say a screenshot it looks like this and nothing works or maybe i should just open the console also for it right well there is no error in console as such so i mean at least not related so it's not very useful but yeah you can just play around with these tools very fun tools very nice tools to build some basic applications can't be used at all for serious code bases um if you have like hundreds of thousands of lines of code you can't use these tools for anything serious but yeah if you take out the context if you're able to isolate your problems these are like really really good tools to get started with a problem set So yeah, I'm not going to debug what it's creating, but I'll just give it a sure shot and check if everything is in order by copy pasting this code one last time before we close the video. Copy this, paste this, reload. And now the whole website doesn't work. Awesome job, ChatGPT. But anyway, I'm not going to debug this further because okay. Okay, maybe I'm wrong over here. I think I just need to replace the script tag, not the whole thing. it by the way did not give me the whole thing back right it just gave me the script tag back okay anyway refresh and apparently it's working now so yeah i was wrong in this case right so um let's see if it actually shows up a confetti or something if um you know if i went no it's not showing any confetti but at least the keyboard starts to work now 
anyway that's pretty cool so yeah that's pretty much it for this video these tools like these can help you also create your own games if you're able to describe the rules how it should work pretty neat thing to you know bring something into existence from nothing so so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it hopefully you loved it and loved the tool and if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video really soon